Right, good morning everybody. Today, as you can see, I've chosen a subject which is rather controversial, particularly to us Gibraltarians, because we all know the origins of the name Gibraltar, or do we, okay? Whatever you read in encyclopedias, Wikipedia, whatever, Gibraltar, named after Tariq Imzayad, the Arab leader, or was it? So I've chosen this subject to start from the very beginning. The people who actually came around here over 4,000 years ago were the Phoenicians. Oops, sorry. There you are. These people spread out through the Mediterranean with their trading, together with the Greeks, and they spread out making little colonies all over the Mediterranean with their trading. One of the places that they settled in was in the Bay of Gibraltar at Cartella. Okay, many of you have heard of Cartella. The proper name, the real name is Melcartella, after their god Melcartes. Okay, now Gibraltar at the time was just a rock barren. They were, remember, if you notice, all the settlements are near rivers. There's no rivers in Gibraltar, no lakes. So they always settled around where there was plenty of water for them to cultivate and drink and so on. Now the first name of Gibraltar, as you can see there, is Kalf. Kalf is a Phoenician word which means to carve, okay? And this was followed by the Romans using another word, Kalpari, which is a, a name for a, a pitcher, for a, a hollow urn, una tinaja, as we call it here in Gibraltar, okay? So they saw Gibraltar as a hollow place, hence the name Calpe, which derived from Calpari. Now, the plot thickens here because these Phoenicians, who were great traders, also invented the Pillars of Hercules, right? The Pillars of Hercules, Melcartes, is the Phoenician god which later became Heracles of the Greeks and Hercules of the Romans. So in fact, the origins of the pillars was the pillars of, he of Melcartes. And they invented that beyond the pillars of Melcartes was the abyss, okay? If you went beyond, that's the god Melcartes of whom I'm gonna talk a bit more. But there you have the pillars of Hercules, <laughs> censored. <laughs> and there you have the abyss, beyond, the pillars, you fell over the edge. But they did this on purpose. Remember that these people were great traders and they used to go all the way to England, whom, or rather they, they had called England the Tin Islands, to there bring back tin to the Mediterranean from Cornwall. There were tin mines in Cornwall and these people already knew about that. So they would bring the tin into the Mediterranean where they would mix it with copper and make bronze. In, in those days, uh, metallurgy was very important. I mean, a, a sword made of bronze against a sword made of copper, the copper would just bend, whilst the, 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 the bronze was very, very strong. And believe it or not, these minerals created wars, created invasions and so on, depending on who had the, the strongest armor and the strongest sword and the strongest spear or whatever. But that was very, very important. The, the Phoenicians also had very great um, trading things like, for example, the purple dye that they used to produce from the murex, the little seashells that we have in, in Catalan Bay, they call them corneti. Maybe you see them on the seashore, the little whelks, okay? That produce a, a purple dye. From there we get the Tyrrhenian purple, which is what the, the Roman emperors used to use because it was very, very uh, expensive and very scarce. It was, uh, you know, particular to, to the nobility. <clears throat> so from there we get to the Roman Mons Calpe, Mons Abila, okay? We now know the origins of Calpe, Abila, the Lofty. That's what it stands for in Latin, the Lofty. But beyond there, we're gonna talk about now the Arab invasion. There was a great gap between the Romans and the, the Arabs, or the Moors, as we call them, because the people who came into Iberia were not Arabs only, they were Moors, Berbers. It was a mixture of many different people from the north of Africa, remember? Islam started in Arabia and they swept through the north of Africa, uh, converting all the different peoples that lived there till they got to Morocco, okay? Mauritania, the land of the Moors, let's face it. And eventually, the uh, governor of Tangier, Tariq Imzayat, he said, look, we're going to expand Islam. Why don't we cross the Straits and go into Iberia? So he sent this chap, Tarif Il Malik, to have a recce. He came across, had a recce, of Vandalusia, which is what it was called, the land of the Vandals. We, afterwards, we call it Andalusia. And he went back and told them, look, it's ripe for uh, invasion. You know, these Vandals are not very uh, coordinated and, and we, can, we can do a good job. So 
we have Tariq landing in Gibraltar, Tariq Imzayat, okay? He was sent by the Grand Master, the, the Grand General of the Northern African tribes, Musa, okay? He was the general in command. He said, okay, nip across and try and, and, and conquer Vandalusia. So he landed in Gibraltar, sorry, burnt his ships and told his men, look, there's no returning back. Either we win this or we drown in the sea like cowards. So they pushed forward, they started pushing forward. And this is where the actual myth starts. The path, Tariq, Tariq. The word Tariq in Arab means path. Okay, we'll come back a bit more to that. So off they went in their invasion. They defeated the king of the, uh, the, the Iberians here in uh, Rio Guadalete, and the path was open. That's why I call this Gibraltar Jebel Tariq, the mountain of the path of Islam. Bear that in mind, because we're going to go a bit further into that. So he found the door open, off he went on his conquest. So rapid was his conquest that Musa felt jealous of that, stopped him at Toledo, and in front of the men slapped his face. How dare you carry on with your conquest without waiting for me? I'm the chief here. And you are a freed man. Remember what I said? Freed man. He was more or less a slave who had been freed in his, in his younger days. Not a very important person, which adds ammunition to what I'm going to tell you in a minute. Eventually, both were sent back to Damascus. The, the uh, caliphs there said, you two, I want to speak to you two there. Tariq was rewarded for what he had done, and uh, Musa was, you know, stripped of all his ranks, and he died a pauper for having been so arrogant with, with Tariq after all he had done, okay? Now, here we end with Tariq in Zayad on the rock, Musa on Mount Zabila cross, and Tarif, who landed in Tarifa. Look at the names Tariq, Musa, and Tarif. Tariq, the path. Musa, in Arab, is Moses. Mons Abila, which is the Jebel Musa for the Arabs, the mountain of Moses. Now, the real Jebel Musa, we're going to talk about that now. There you see Tariq, a person's name. It also means path. And in Malta, the roads are called trick. And in Holland, trek. So it adds, you know, ammunition to my, my argument that trick, track, tarik, road. <laughs> okay, <laughs> path. <laughs> there we are. Trick, track, track. <laughs> Tarif, in the other way, the word taraf in Arab means the end of. Wasn't tarifa the end of the world? Okay, beyond taraf, you fell over the edge. So once the Arabs had the control of the straits, any ship coming in or out, through the, the, the straits, had to pay a tariff, a duty when they got to Tarifa. That's the origin of the word we use in English now. You have to pay a tariff from Tarifa, okay? And Musa, like I said before, Jebel Musa, the mountain where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. You can see there, I put a few other names like Jazeera al Hadra, Al Jaziras, the Green Island, Wadi El Kebir, the big river, Al Hamra, the red. So, it was inconceivable for Islam to allow people to name places after persons. Okay, which we'll come to that in a minute. There you are, Musa, the real Moses and the Arab Musa, and Jebel Musa, Mount Sinai, where God is supposed to have given Moses the Ten Commandments. Now there you have it, the first commandment, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So you cannot name anything. If you go to Arab palaces like the Alhambra, the, the in, in, in uh, Seville as well, the Al Qasaba there, all you see are very beautiful drawings of passages of the Quran. You do not see pictures of people. That's idolatry. You cannot have that. So, how on earth would they have named Gibraltar after Tariq in Zayat? So, my argument about the mountain of the path is what I'm using as an example. Now, in the year 1333, we had the reconquest of Gibraltar by the Moors because it had been taken by the Spanish. But in 1333, Abu Malik, this Arab leader, captured Gibraltar again from the Spanish. The first things he did, he reconstructed the whole place. He made the Moorish castle, as you see today. There were other castles under that, which had been demolished during different sieges. And the last construction is the one you see today. That is from 1333. And he called Gibraltar Jebel al-Fat and the town Medina al-Fat, the mountain of victory. 
So that was the name of Gibraltar from 1333 onwards. Jebel Tariq, forgotten, okay? And you can see the drawing there from my good friend, George Palau. Blessings be upon him. <laughs> uh, the first things the, the Moors did was capture the bells from our Christian churches because to them, they were trophies of war. And every time they conquered a Christian town or city, they would take everything that smelled of Christianity with them. And those bells, believe it or not, you can see in Fez, two of them from Gibraltar, from Jebel Al-Fat. They used them, sorry, as lamps. They are there as war trophies. I was there a couple of years ago and they didn't let me go in, but I already had the photographs, okay? <laughs> <coughs> and inscribed on one of the bells, there's quite a long inscription, and at, you see on the second paragraph, this is the bell found at Jebel Al-Fat, Gibraltar, God keep it, and so on. So that, it was Jebel Al-Fat, okay? Now we end up with this conglomerate of different names, starting with Gibraltar, Kalf, Monscalpe, Jebel Tariq, Jebel Al-Fat, and finally, the Gibraltar we know today. I believe that the Gibraltar we use today was coined by the Spanish who took Gibraltar again from the Arabs, and they remembered maybe, ah, that's the hill of Tariq, we could call it Jebel Tariq, okay? Gibraltar, Gibraltar in Spanish. Across Septa, Ceuta, Septa, the seven, there's supposed to be seven hills there, that's why it's called Septa. And Mons Avila, like I said before, the lofty, Jebel Musa of Moses, and Apes Hill to the British. If you look, look at English maps, you'll see it as Apes Hill. There are still a few monkeys around there. Tingis, Tanja, Tangiers, and Taraf, Tarifa, okay? So that is, that is my argument. I mean, I leave it with you for you to decide whether I'm right or wrong, or yeah, it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. So I leave it up to you to decide, and that's the end of it. Okay, how's that for timing? Okay, there you are.